Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza, commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. All the relevant links will be down below. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Story number one. Imagination written by Black Liger. Humans are strange. This is a known fact amongst all galactic societies. They aren't stronger, faster, smarter, or anything like that. It is that they imagine... Now, don't get me wrong, most species can conceptualize, many are masters of it, but humans do so for fun. They imagine what life would be under other circumstances. No other race, pre-first contact, had devoted any thought beyond the basic policy making to the idea of contact with another race. No race was considered it worthwhile when they can't know all the variables. The humans had over 30 terabytes of first contact material, ranging from the hostile invasion from another world to an uh, invitation to join a galactic federation by the time they encountered us. We were confused as to how well they were taking it. Most species, upon encountering another species in the void, go into a full-fledged panic, desperately trying to piece together a first contact approach around the newly available information. Humans, on the other hand, gathered some basic info and had first contact protocols customized to us within one week of our first transmission. This propensity to imagine also follows into other human fields. They take risks that we would shy away from because they have already run through scenarios in this in their heads. When the Katoit declared a war on the humans, we were shocked to learn that they had planned for the eventuality and had their fleet mobilized and ready to fight within one month of the declaration, all because they had imagined and gamed out the scenario of being attacked by the Gohoit. We were horrified to learn that they had done the same to the idea of it us attacking them, or the fleet, or the Zitung. None of us had ever considered the idea of the humans attacking us. All the variables we could see suggested it wouldn't be worth their while, so why would we spend resources on planning for it? So, imagination. It is their blessing and their curse. After all, it is only the humans who can come up with the idea of paranoia, a state in which their imagination constantly has them concerned that they are under threat. And of story. Story number two. Those that came before. Written by Norod Naya Toast. Humans were long gone. It was not clear exactly what had befallen their civilization. All signs pointed to them having colonized much of their galaxy, and a single planet disaster would merely have dimmed, not snuffed out, the torch. It could have been a genocide by another species, or some form of super virus, or an event which reset the progress of evolution back to zero. Whichever it was, it had happened with a deadly efficiency. Humanity was extinct. The species which flourished in the ashes of humanity were primitive, all lived and died without ever understanding those that came before. For a very long time, the song of humanity lay buried, with only the occasional note emerging via a species which encountered remnants of their technology. None, however, could possibly understand what they had found, and the note would fade out of existence, a bright spot in the eternal orchestra of life and death. This pattern repeated across many worlds that had been colonized. Then... Evolution rolled the dice and smiled on the results. One world, a new species, forced to adapt to the environment which blew ice and fire, rain, sand and thunder, sometimes all at once, began their dominion. Some nine million years after the last human took their last breath, they too were primitive. At first, 
They forged words with their hands and tools with their mouths. They gave themselves a name, Hytha. Civilization followed a torrent of order, flooding an hospitable landscape. Some fought each other and died, and those who survived became stronger and wiser. War was relegated to history and deemed detrimental to their progress. They, in time, shaped the world to their whims. The rate of advancement could not last. Having reached the limits of their minds and mouths, their march of dominion slowed to a crawl. Progress became stagnation. They silently looked towards the stars in awe and wonder, but lacked the means to open the curtain upon the universe. For hundreds of years they remained as such, always reaching for the stars but never quite touching them. Nevertheless, they had faith that their efforts would prevail. Endless, soundless prayers were made. One day, one day we will make it. The curtain blew up upon one day when they discovered that those who came before. It started with a child missing in a forest. Days after hope had been lost, the child emerged, well-fed and eyes sparkling with adventure, holding a map in one hand and a strange hexagonal object in another. They led a group of adults down the route marked on the map, and in the clearing an object was pressed into the rock with an hexagonal shape missing. Instantly, the trees and the ground began to shudder. A tower, made of a material never seen before, emerged from the earth. The child opened their mouth and uttered the first words the Hayatha had ever spoken. You well come. It was quite the shock to those of the Supreme Council. Vast subterranean complexes filled to the brim with hereithro unknown knowledge and technology, right beneath the feet all this time, hidden from plain sight. Machines as intelligent and wise as any creatures roamed the depths, maintaining the legacy of those that came before. They had been monitoring this world and others ever since the humans had died. They had allowed the child to seek refuge in their arms. They had taught her how to speak. They had decided that now was the time for this world to understand its past. Those first explorers encountered the same machines that stood the child, and the machines communicated with them with ease, having learned all they could of the Hayatha from the child. A new word entered the Hayatha lexicon. Human. The machines taught them all human history, success and mistakes, and glorious days and dreadful days. The Hayatha came to know that those who came before, and they mourned the humans as much as celebrated them, knowing that they could never thank them, never for saving one of their own, nor for all the lessons that they were able to learn. The machines observed the progress of the Hayatha. Only when they swore to not repeat the mistakes of the humans did the machines give them the secrets to the stars. Hayatha began to speak with mouths and forged tools with their hands. They took to the skies, forging pathways into the unknown. The stars greeted them with open arms. The stars showed them things they could only dream of. New landscapes and planets and species and astonishing, unimaginable technology. The Hayatha, in turn, gave a gift of knowledge to others, finding and communicating their message to all that would listen. In time, they watched over hundreds of species, having united to honor those humans who had wished to do the same so very long ago. The machines became their friends and confidants. Their knowledge combined avoided many catastrophes. The child that had been saved on that day so long ago had volunteered to be augmented with life-extending technology by the machines to bear witness to the advancements of her species. She became known as the Timeless One. She watched over the Hayatha as they ascended to the status of the gods. She helped them write a book of time which documented every bit of knowledge ever learned. If ever civilization were to collapse once more, another species could continue what they had started. That they had learned from the humans. Those who came before were ever present in everything that the Hayatha and their allies said, did, and created. 
All species who came to know of the humans mourned them. They mourned the humans would never see the billions of lives living in peace and harmony. They mourned that the humans would never see how their failures had led to the success of others. Some thought them cursed to have died out so early. Others thought them unfortunate and unlucky. All believed that the universe was cruel and it had killed them before they could learn from their own mistakes. The Supreme Galactic Council, having deliberated for many years, came to decision, announcing their intentions to all. They wished to honor the humans for their contributions to Utopia. The machines naturally gave their blessing. The Timeless One simply nodded and smiled. And thus, the great project began. It required the expertise of those from many, many species and technological advances which pushed knowledge to the limits of even the gods were made in a matter of years. There was much trepidation also. The risk of it going terribly wrong was ever-present. Questions were raised, questions on how far they could reasonably go to achieve their goals when it would be completed, and whether the project was even viable. The Hyatha worried not. Long ago, they had had a faith that would one day touch the stars. They kept that faith even now, unshakable and steady as they walked through the valleys of the unknowable. The project did not succeed. Not at first. The resources required were vast, and even their technology was not sufficient. Hyatha cried in the corridors of many research stations, knowing that their attempts were feigning. The machines were a source of solace in the dark times. Do not be sad. The humans would be proud of how far you've come. Other species lent everything they could, some pausing their own advancement to contribute to the effort. The machines entered the depths of their own minds, searching for anything that could help. Throughout, the Timeless One watched, waited, and hoped. The collective efforts paid off at last. The great project was declared a success. Although every member of every species knew that something beyond imagination was about to occur. Only the leaders and the scientists knew what. Many thought it was a new type of FTL craft designed to travel beyond the limits of the universe. Others spread theories that humans had been found in stasis and were being unfrozen. Some believed that Hyatha had ascended beyond time itself. It was decided to unveil the project's result on Hyatha's planet of origin. The amphitheater of gold and steel was erected, overlooking fields and beaches and beautiful blue oceans beyond. The beauty of this place was the talk of legends. It was a perfect location for what was to come. The scientists wheeled in the project to the crowd of thousands, with billions more watching from cities across the many galaxies. From the outside, it seemed to be a slab of marble, a few meters high and around one meter wide. On the inside hid a pinnacle of ascended species technology. The Timeless One stood off to one side, watching augments glowing in the dim light of dawn. In her hand, she clutched a small, weathered book. She began to rise and cast a pink light across the landscape and the amphitheater, and all who were watching held their breaths in anticipation. The marble slab groaned and creaked as it opened like a book, then splintered, falling to the ground, revealing the secret inside. Many gasped in shock, many fainted, and many put their hands onto their mouths in sheer awe. The great project had gone far, far beyond honoring the humans. Humans were extinct. The fact was immutable. However, the laws of the universe had never dictated that they should stay extinct. And as the human inside the marble slab had opened their eyes and took their first breath, taking in the vista before them, the crowd cried and hugged each other and cheered, the realization that the civilizations had done the impossible settling in. And in the billions of cities across the dozens of galaxies, billions took the streets in celebration. The human cried too as they took careful, wobbly steps towards the sunrise, 
placing two perfect hands on the glass lining the far end of the amphitheater. Their eyes, full of life not seen in aeons, the sun rose and rose and cast beams of light across the human space, caressing their body, welcoming them back to the world of the living. They closed their eyes for a brief moment, feeling the thrum of their heart and the simple joy of being alive. Then they turned to the crowd and raised a single fist, thumb outstretched and pointing to the sky. In ancient Hyathen, such a gesture meant human. The crowd raised their fists in response and screamed with joy until their throats were hoarse. The timeless one emerged from the shadows cast by the sunrise. She took careful, frail steps across the dirt, approaching the human. The crowd grew silent in trepidation. She spoke, raspy with age, but her words were clear. My debt is repaid. From the day your machine saved me, I have been waiting to save you. Our worlds are yours for the rest of time. She pressed the book into the human's hand. Everything within these pages is for you. Use it well. And so, recreated from the barest fragment of data as the ultimate act of love from a universe who owed them everything, humans were reborn. For the first time in eons, they walked planet Earth, birthplace of the Hyrathra, once more. This time, they were here to stay. Utopia was waiting for them with open arms. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode, and I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.